This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Oh, welcome into another edition of the Breakdown. I'm Tucker Franklin stepping in for Matt Hamilton today, and as always, we're joined by Chase Daniel to break down some of the Chiefs' three key plays in that matchup against the Miami Dolphins. Chase, how you doing today? Good, good. I'm glad you're able to host. You're usually behind the scenes running all the plays. Hammer's not feeling too well, so I'm glad that uh, you're getting your first look, and especially at a playoff game at hosting this show. So I appreciate all you do for the show, and we got some good plays to break down today. We really do. We got some good ones. Good performance from the Chiefs in the offense. Showed a little bit of life there. Uh, look, I'm just stepping up. I'm the next man up. A little Chad Henney approach here, right? He had to yeah. step up when, I, when I'm when i called upon. Oh, wow. But uh, Chase, first thoughts from uh, the Chiefs' offensive performance against the Miami Dolphins is they look like they showed a, a little bit of, of, of some life there. Yeah, I mean, look, it was their best game on offense by far. Like, it, it, everything about this game was excellent. Um, the game planning... Um, the, the fact that they came out throwing the football when everyone, their mom, including me, thought they were going to run Isaiah Pacheco to death. Um, and, and it, you know, that to me was interesting. You know, they did come out throwing the ball right away. Uh, you saw the first play of the game, a little bit of a timing issue with, with Kelsey and Mahomes. But in the post game presser, presser, Andy Reid was asked, Hey, like what, what made you want to be able to throw the football in negative six degrees? It's the fourth coldest game in NFL history. He said, well, not everyone has Patrick Mahomes. And I was like, yep. And honestly, like watching it back on the all 22 and not only live, but actually watching it back a a few times, all the plays that they ran, he threw the ball about as well as he's thrown all year long in negative six degree temp. So it just goes to show you like Mahomes is king, right? Mahomes is dangerous. all, All these things. And they were clicking. Look, they struggled a little bit in the red zone. That's been their sort of Achilles heel of late. Like, they've been doing a good job on third down. They've been kicking a lot of field goals lately. Now, going into this matchup with the Bills, they have to score points. I would imagine there's some time, and I'm sure we'll break it down a little bit later, but imagine there's some time in the game versus the Bills in the red zone that Andy Reid's going to have to go for it on fourth down. And um, it's going to be an interesting game. But I, but I thought this, this look... They 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 bum rush the Miami Dolphins, man. Like they, they like Miami and and on the Tua side of things broke him down too, and he just looked like he didn't want to be there. To be completely honest, like the Chiefs defense made him quit. Um, the weather really affected Tua. They were rarely throwing the ball down the field. The one time they did to Tyree Kill, it was it was underthrown. That was a touchdown. Um, and you know, I said on this uh, show last week. I said to Hammer, I said, hey, look, the magic number is 25, and they sure were close to that. The magic number this week versus the Bills might be 35, though. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. But I'm just really impressed with the overall performance on the offensive side of the football. Absolutely. Good to see some life going into a division around game. Took care of business. You mentioned the Miami Dolphins didn't didn't really look like they wanted to be there. That first time Isaiah Pacheco lowered his shoulder, you can tell, all right, these guys, it doesn't really look like they want any of that smoke because I cannot imagine what it was like, what it would be like trying to tackle Isaiah Pacheco in weather like that. It's already hard to just function in the cold, but then you got a guy running full speed ahead of you at all times. Uh, it, it, it's going to be very similar weather in Buffalo, but let's go ahead and break down uh, some of these plays. You mentioned the red zone struggles. I think that's kind of... One of the biggest things that Chiefs Kingdom is concerned about, but this is one play here that they did execute in the red zone. Go ahead and break this one down for us, Chase. Yeah, this play was awesome. Look, you got Travis Kelsey um, in a little short motion, his little walk short motion. And look, you know, we're drawing all this stuff on the screen. Dude, we, we ran this play in 2013, 2014, and 2015. The play call is, is literally X shallow cross zebra swing. And Zebra's what they call the slot receiver. X is the single receiver by Rasheed Rice. They've been running this play for a decade, dude. And the fact of the matter is, it's it's players, not plays. It's about execution. So I think Andy Reid sort of went back into his bag of goodies and bag of tricks and said, hey, let's just simplify. They've been running this play every which way in training camp. And every game they have this, it's just, hey, how are we going to personnel it? How are we going to formate it? Are we going to go a two by two? Are we going to go a three by one? Are we going to go one by three slot? And look, when Travis Kelsey goes on this little middle hook, this is literally what they're calling it, a middle hook route. He draws two defenders with him. And Rasheed Rice, it's quarters coverage. So it's like man underneath. This Mike defender right here on Travis Kelsey's right shoulder should be falling off. 
to Rasheed Rice. The swing route up top, it's like a wheel. They call it a wheel. They call it a swing route. Is taking out the nickel, and you got three guys with eyes on Travis Kelsey. Okay, this is why Rasheed Rice is so important to this play is because it's man underneath. So when the swing route clears out the nickel, there's nothing but green grass, and he runs it perfectly. It's called the green grass rule in the Andy Reid offense. If you're coming on a shallow cross, four to six yards shallow cross, if you see green grass, you run. And if you give the quarterback his eyes, which Rasheed Rice is doing right here, you better keep running. If you're running and there's no green grass, you're going to sit it down on the hash for zone coverage. This is plays like man, and it's a perfect play call. I mean, we scored a couple times on it in 13, 14, and 15. This is an excellent play. They get a little run pass three jet, which means the back comes across. I think that helps with the Mike linebacker. But just a perfect play call at a perfect time for Andy Reid and the Chiefs. Absolutely. They're, uh, as, as you mentioned, the red zone offense left more to be desired for. But I like to see a lot of this uh, from the Chiefs, these uh, routes. Rasheed Rice had a huge day. Actually, the best day in rookie receiving history in the postseason. He has the Chiefs record for it. And he was, I think, now seventh on the all-time list with wow. Nakua's day. So, big day for Rasheed Rice. Uh, big day for the receiving uh, core and just getting that chemistry built. And we saw it last week uh, on week nine against the Miami Dolphins. They're really building that chemistry. Now, let's move on uh, to the next play we got here, Chase. Go ahead and uh, break this one down for us. Third and yeah, look, third and ten uh, and... Big Fangio, first of all, you see right here, it, it's clear as day, it's cover zero. They're bringing the house, they're bringing seven. The Chiefs have five old linemen and a running back to block. So Mahomes knows this, okay? Mahomes understands the ball has to get out. The crazy thing about this is because they short motion out, and I think that's Justin Washington who short motions all the way out, the guy over Rasheed Rice is now outside leverage. He's wrong. He's completely wrong. It's cover zero, and cover zero where there's nobody back in the middle of the field Every defender should be six to eight yards off, one to two yards inside leverage. You can clearly see right here that this is outside leverage man-to-man. -man. What's even crazier about this play is there's really no hot throw on this play. So the Chiefs got caught with their pants down a little bit right here. And, of course, Patrick Mahomes bells them out. Okay, look, it's a, it's a through route by the number three receiver. He's supposed to just run, clear things out. Rasheed Rice has like a 12 to 15 yard over route. You're telling me that Patrick Mahomes buys enough time, which he does right here, in a crowded pocket. Rasheed Rice understands there's nobody in the middle field. I have outside leverage. What is this DB doing? He gets the ball. He knows he's going to get hit. Like that's the thing about it. Because they mic one, the back has the other, and they're going to get, they're going to get hit. And the fact of the matter is, I, I don't know, Tucker, if this would have been completed 10 weeks ago or even eight weeks ago, or even six weeks ago, because the trust in Mahomes and receivers, specifically, it's gotten a lot better with number four, Rasheed Rice. And he's coming into his own. I think he's an excellent pickup. And the the more he understands the game, the more he plays with Patrick Mahomes in games like this. Like, this is a big game. This is wild card weekend. Like, it's a playoff game. Like, you lose, you go home. And he showed up in the biggest stage as a rookie. of super impressive. It's that throw to and that catch, that uh, that out of frame catch that he was able to make on the run, keep the ball, keep it running, everything like that. He has just shown a lot of improvements, and I think you make a great point about the chemistry with these guys. Um, that's huge, and I, and I totally agree with. Uh, he probably doesn't make that throw because he probably doesn't feel comfortable. Uh, now Rasheed Rice really coming into his own. I'm excited what he can do against Buffalo. See what they can do against a pretty banged up secondary. But let's move on to the next play. Uh, look, we know Patrick Mahomes can make guys pay make teams pay with his arm but I think a really underrated part of his game is his running ability and his scrambling ability Chase what did we see here yeah I mean we saw playoff Pat right here man he ain't sliding <laughs> he ain't sliding and look it's time all the marbles are on the table dude there's win or go home I said it before and what's crazy to me about this is he used his legs in uh probably more situations than he would have obviously in a regular season game but he looked probably as quick as I've seen him. He had a couple red zone scrambles, which he usually, look, in the regular season, he scrambles to throw. Here he scrambled to run because everyone's like, okay, we haven't seen it all year long. Buffalo will be ready for this. And that's crazy about the other side of the football is Josh Allen ran for 79 yards. So you're going to have two quarterbacks in Mahomes and Allen that are going to be using their legs, that are going to be using to buy time. And look, a route concept, it's a wheel 
dagger route right here by the slot guy. And Kelsey's going to get double teamed like always. They're playing this perfect coverage uh, that Vic Fangio is known for. It's this quarter, quarter, half look. It's man up all the way out there. They're going to three over two, the number three receiver and the two receiver in trips. Mahomes is covered and Ma look, her, her, Kelsey's covered. And mm, Vic Fangio couldn't get it right because he all out pressured, right? The last snap that we saw, which actually brought a lot of cover zero in this game. He rushed three, he rushed four, and it's just you're right on the edge of field goal range. If you get a stop right here, the Chiefs are probably punting because of the weather, and everyone's covered. Like it's not, it's not not open. And he just does a good job. Like he's not the fastest guy, but the way he fits through the pocket, the way he uh contorts his body to just make sure, like this was a crowded pocket right here. And look, he, a lot of people would slide, and there was a there was another scramble uh we're not gonna show, but it, it, later in the game where he just tried to lower his head and get some extra yards. I get it, but like he's got such a knack at knowing where everyone is around him at all times. And it really showed this game. It really helped the Chiefs offense get going. Absolutely. His his legs, and really, if you think back just in the play his playoff history, uh, he's done this a lot. Like in terms of getting uh, getting big plays on the ground. I think about the touchdown against the Titans that really kind of turned the tide in the AFC championship yeah. game a, f a few years ago on the way to their Super Bowl run. Uh, and, and like, look, you mentioned Josh Allen. You mentioned guys like this quarterbacks that like to run. He's not going to slide. Patrick Mahomes does the not necessarily fake slide, I guess people wanted to call it, but he does the, oh, I'm going to go out of bounds, and then he turns it up for a couple more just to just as a little advantage that he can do. Uh, but, no, I love it when Patrick gets things going down on the, uh, on the ground, and that's really, I think, when this offense works the best is when uh, he's got things going on the, on the ground. And he's going to be a road. He's going to be a road quarterback for the first time in his playoff career, Chase. That's crazy. In his seven years, six years of starting, it's the first time he's played a road playoff game. And I think that's just kind of astounding and speaks to the success that he's had already in his career. Well, I mean, five straight AFC championship games, right? Two Super yeah. Bowl wins, three Super Bowl. I mean, it's just... The numbers back it up that that he's goaded, right? Like he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer if he quit today. And that just says a lot about not only Patrick Mahomes as a player, but the support system, the support staff that's been around him. Andy Reid, uh, Matt Nagy was there, left, came back. I think Nagy's actually doing a good job, unlike other fans who out there um, have their druthers about him. Uh, but I think that this, you're starting to see like, hey, Nagy come in and say, hey, Andy, let's get back to just what we do normal. Let's just stop trying to reinvent the wheel let's stop trying to be someone we are and I think it, it showed and, and this game's going to be really telling look the only two three away games that Patrick Mahomes has played have been Super Bowls and that's crazy to say and if you look back and you actually break down Patrick Mahomes' career numbers I think I'm like one or two off because we talked about it on the podcast he's 37 and 11 at home he's 38 and 11 on the road he's a safe quarterback on the road or at home so it doesn't really matter. Uh, it, they're going to have to deal with some snow, some weather, but not as bad as last week. So I'd expect some fireworks. Look, the, the crazy thing about this story line and about this Chiefs-Bills game that a lot of people aren't talking about is the fact of the matter is that the Bills have an excellent defense. Their defense is top six in the NFL in everything. So don't expect just fireworks from the get-go. They're going to have to do some things. The, the, the crazy thing about the Bills' defense is that they play this Sean McDermott too-high look, and everything's sort of man up underneath. So Chiefs receivers are going to have to beat this too-high man, quarters man underneath. Look, everything is going to be uh, tight window throws. They're going to have to run the ball really well. They're going to have to play good defense. Um, so I sort of think in a battle of two really good offenses, I sort of think you see a little bit of a defensive battle in the first half, and then the scoring begins in the second half. I agree with you. I was going to bring that up, too. Like, both of these two teams play a lot of defense. When you come to expect a Bills-Chiefs matchup, you expect fireworks because of the how good and how dynamic both of these quarterbacks are. But I do think it's going to be a defensive struggle for at least a half and for these two teams feeling each other out. Uh, I'm excited almost for me, from my point of view, for Patrick Mahomes to go on the road. I think it's going to be exciting for him to be in that hostile environment. And look, any weather's gonna feel like a like a like a heat wave compared to what they had last week against the Dolphins. I know the weather in Buffalo is nasty right now. It's gonna be uh, snowy, I think, still, and, and all kinds of weather uh, going over there in in Orchard Park. But um, yeah, Chase, I'm really excited for this matchup. Uh, 
first thoughts, I guess. I don't I don't want to get your prediction, right? I don't want to ask for a prediction on this one. And you already mentioned kind of you think it'd be in a slug fest there, but how do you think the Chiefs can exploit kind of the weaknesses of that 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 Bills defense? Because they are hurt a little bit. They're banged up a little bit. Everyone's banged up this time of year, but they're missing some pretty key guys on that uh, Bills defense side of the ball. Yeah, and and they they are like they are banged up injury wise. Their linebackers they were on their third practice squad linebacker and AJ squad AJ Klein, which I play with AJ Klein. I think he's a great player. He's going to have a full week of practice. Who knows if he comes back? They're banged up on the D line. Uh, who knows if they're going to have their safeties back? And, and I think in a game like this. Um, and I said it last week, but they came out throwing with the way that um, Buffalo deploys their defense. You, they're light in the box. There's six man boxes a lot. So you, I think that you're going to have a lot of run pass kills. What does that mean? Well, you're going to start with runs. If it's six man box, that's good. If it's a seven man box single high, you're going to kill it. So I think there's going to be a lot of onus on Mahomes at the line of scrimmage to get into the right play, to get into the right protection. They don't blitz a lot on first and second down. They bring the heat a little bit on third down. Uh, nothing that Mahomes hasn't seen. So I do think that they're going to get in the right look for the right play at the right time. She's pretty close to, to 50-50 when it came to uh, passing and rushing last week. Uh, something that we don't really see a whole lot from the Chiefs. Love to see him get the ball on the ground, get Isaiah Pacheco. Clyde Brzezler has been playing really well recently, too. He's been uh, being at, was a key cog in those uh, some third down conversions late in the game as they continue to add points on the board. But uh, Chase, appreciate you joining uh, and uh, breaking this one down. That's going to do it for this week's edition of The Breakdown. Matt Hamilton will be back next week, don't worry, and so will uh, Chase as they break down some more plays from the Chiefs and Bills divisional round. Really excited for this one, so make sure you stay tuned. And for everything we got here at KC Sports Network, we'll catch you next time.